<laughs> all right, all right. But, well, um, let me tell you something. I, I was amazed myself at, as, 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 as to the number of dog lovers in Ghana, you know. I didn't know there were that many dog lovers in Ghana, you know. I mean, I've, I've had dogs in, in, as I'm growing up, uh, you know, few. In all my life, just two dogs, you know. Um, the first dog was called Dingo. And the thing about this dog was I didn't bark. So when a visitor is coming to the house, it will just be lying down quietly, no barking. So when the visitor comes and he sits down, then he walks slowly. I'm going to bite him. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Yeah. And then, then we, had, we had another dog called Sidi. You know, uh, we call it Sidi because the dog didn't have any value. So just like the, 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 the master was named after. Anyway, um, why am I talking so much about dogs? It's because we have a dog trainer in the house today, man. And I have also become a dog lover in my old age. I have a cute little dog called, uh, what's the name of my dog? Champ. I call my dog Champ. It's a cute little uh, 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 puppy. Here, here's a look at, take a look at my, my dog. Yeah, that's, that, and that's my Champ, and I love dogs. You know. So since I, I started falling in love with dogs, somebody told me to get in touch with a dog trainer who helped me and guide me and explain more about the psychology of dogs and how dogs actually think and relate. I said, really? I said, yeah. So I combed them, combed them, combed them, and I found one dog trainer who I have here today. And for all of you dog ruggers, get your notebooks and pens ready because he's going to give us insight into what dogs really are. A man's and a woman's best friend. Put your hands together. Show some love for Robert Anna. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Robert, welcome to the show, man. Ah, thank you, sir. Good to have you here. Yeah, good to be here too. Sir. I'm going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to find out more about dogs. Today is for dog lovers. Stick around. We'll be right back. We're just getting started. The KSM Show will be right back. The KSM Show. We are back. How are you doing, man? I'm fine, sir. How, how long have you been into dog training? Uh, all my life. Um, it's a skill God gave to me. All your life? Yes. God asked me to come here to teach people about dogs from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so this really? Is, yes, I'm a, I'm a dog lover to the extreme, and that's how come I'm able to train them. I, I saw that when you came to the house, man, you yes. know, um, because you, you, you called Champ and you, you were just having, talking to Champ like it was a, a kid there that you yeah. knew. And, you know, I'm like, wow, mm. you know, mm. that's, a, that's a level of dog loving. <laughs> but what, 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 what drew you to dogs? It's me. I think that the first time I saw dogs you just as a loved kid, it. I, I saw a dog as a kid. As a kid? I, yes, I, I, liked, I liked them. I'm, I'm not just a dog lover. I like animals in general. Okay. So I like animals in general. I like dogs. And then I'm specifically drawn to the guard dog breeds, and then they are training. I see. Yes. I so see. I'm an animal person. You're an animal person. And then I'm a, I'm a dog lover, and then um, I'm drawn to the guard dog breeds. Okay. And, and they okay. Are training. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So there are many dog lovers listening. You know, some of yeah. them have dogs, but yeah. they don't have any idea yeah. of of the psychology of dogs. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. I was going to ask you, like, two very important things that every dog lover should know about their dog, mm -hmm. what would it be? Ah, uh, basically, a dog is, is an animal that, that feeds on affection, on human affection, mm. okay? So, basically, as a dog lover, basically, you should love your dog. And mm. you know, love is expressive. It's, it's, it's practical. It's not just a thing you see. If you love your dog, in, in the first place, you're going to vibrate it. It's going to feel it. Mm. And that's, that's what forms the basis of a dog's bonding with you. That's what even forms the basis of training, first and foremost, your love for your dog. Yes. So, so I would say you should love your dog, basically. Mm. Honestly, let me say it here. If you want a dog for guarding, if you want a dog for any purpose, if you don't love dogs, please get an alarm system. Because even the guard dog uh, uh, situation works best for dog lovers because of a, a bunch of reasons I would explain. Really? Yes. So if yes. the dog doesn't feel loved, if it doesn't, it doesn't feel protect you that loved, with, it doesn't with protect, no. or it doesn't protect it you doesn't at all? It doesn't even protect you at all. Really? Because it, it's just like, uh, imagine you are... You are you are with people, and everybody is disconnected. You know, they don't respect you. They don't, they don't seem to make you feel 
that you are worth anything. All right. So uh, you, you'd have to be a very good person to, be co to feel connected to them. But as for dogs, they are direct. They, don't, they are not diplomatic. They, they just respond to you as, as you, you treat them. Mm. So mm. what a dog feels from you is what it gives back to you automatically. Mm. You know, he's not going to say yes, sir, and turn his back and say, oh, you see my balls. No, 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 that's not a dog. <laughs> a dog is going to They're tell not you. hypocrites. No, 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 no. A dog is going to tell you, no, I don't like you because you don't like me. And it's going to reflect wow. to wow. you that way. So after you have a dog, you are not a dog lover. You don't connect with your dog. But now you want the dog to be trained to serve you. No, 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 no. You, you can't use a dog. You have to understand the dog first. Be mm. a doggy person first. Mm. Then the dog can also uh, uh, respond. And then mm. once you've established that basic platform, from there, training takes off. Mm. Yes, so that's how it works. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Um, so, so you have a dog and um, you, 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 you want to train it to do... Like pot, 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 potty training. Mm -hmm. You get a puppy mm -hmm. and you want to potty train it so mm -hmm. that it knows where to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and not in there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you. How yeah, do what you signals do you. Do? Potty, potty training is, is not easy, okay? Typically, you have to start from the time the dog is a, a real a puppy, you know, a very young puppy. But one thing with dog training is it requires your patience. Please, you have to mm. be patient. You have to be patient. You, you should be patient. But then apart from that, you have to be patient. Ideally, you should be guided by a true professional. Because, you know, when, you say, when I say you have to be patient, you know, patient is, is quite a vague word. I mean, how patient is patient, okay? Mm. So, and that's where the, the professional comes in. But you see... All right, but you let me go back because I think I'm deviating from your question. Potty training. So the, the, the way it goes is when you put a puppy in a crate, okay, uh, you put a paper in the crate. Now, instinctively, puppies would like to uh, uh, answer nature's call on the paper, to poop on the paper. So he'll be pooping on the paper, he'll be pooping on the paper. Then you take the puppy out and then you, you make the paper visible wherever it is, whether it's your hole. So he'll transfer... He'll keep going after the paper to do the pooping. Really? Then, but then, please, there's going to be mistakes. It's not, it's not as simple as that. You'd have to, that's where the patience comes in. And in training a dog, you never punish the dog because he doesn't understand you as yet. Let's say, by your language, if you say, mm -mm, it means I've, I've got, I have to get up. But so far, I don't know mm -mm means I should get up. So when you say, mm -mm, and I'm sitting down, and you get angry with me, what are you angry with me for? Mm. The dog is learning, okay? So he'll make mistakes, but you patiently keep on, you know? But there are a few techniques in there. So you keep, you keep shifting the paper until you gradually take it outside to the spot where you want him to do the pooping. And then once he gets it, he starts doing it there. But it's, it's not as simple as I'm saying mm, it. It takes a time. lot of, it takes yeah. time, it takes patience, and it takes understanding. You know, hmm. training dogs is all about understanding. You see, um, so, so that is how to do the potty training bit. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes. So how, how important is it? For yeah. example, can you just have a dog and you just have the dog? Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. go through any training. Any with the training. Dog. The, the occasional, you know, yeah. occasional and, playing. And then and you there. go away. Okay. Yeah. Th this is how it goes. Now, you know, there are so many types of dogs being kept by people all over. If you are keeping a dog and it's just a pet, you know, you just want a dog to be around. Yeah. You don't particularly need it to be... A, a, a guard dog, a guard dog I would dog, say. Yeah. And, and if your doggy keeping style is ideal, is good. Because honestly, it isn't everyone whose doggy keeping, sti keeping style, that's where you are calling dogs pets, is ideal, is good. Okay. But if it is good, then I would say that if you are keeping an average dog, oh, you should be nice to the dog, relate with it, it will get you somehow. That is if you are a pro animal person. But if you are Purchasing a dog to be a guard dog, it needs, you know, you have to be well informed. Let me, let me, let me expand it a little bit. Now, uh, the guard dog breeds, they're not for fun, please. I, I, I thank the KSM show because this is an opportunity for anyone who is listening to me to get the truth. And I'll teach you even how to get the, I'll, I'll I don't like using the word teach. I'll, mm. I'll share with you how to get the, the, the truth, you know, further, not for me, because this is a science that I'm going to explain. The guard dog breeds date back hundreds of years BC, okay? So this is not a latter day thing. This is something that, that goes far back. The Persians, the Egyptians, 
and others, you, if you go to research, please, my, my, my friends, you would, you would know, etc. We're using dogs for war, okay? Now, so in those days, there were crack dog trainers. Now, in those days, a soldier was not uh, shooting. I mean, modern day soldiers are good, but in, th in those days, if you, if you were a soldier, you wore armor, heavy armor, you fought uh, with a, a sword, you had a shield. Now, imagine dogs that are fighting with swords, sorry, humans fighting with swords and shields. That means they are strong men already and they are trained soldiers. And people were using dogs to fight these people. And there are, they, uh, there, there's documented history that the dogs were used to break enemy lines and then human soldiers could now go in to defeat the enemy. Mm. Now, just imagine this. Old gladiators fought beasts, okay? They fought leopards, they fought lions, they fought beasts. So if dogs were used on them, that tells you where the guard dogs are coming from. They are not for jokes at all. They are for the defense of human beings. Now, um, presently we have crime on the high. You know, people, people enter people's homes and kill them just like that. Now, if you have two trained guard dogs, they are obedient, trained, so you can control them. They know their job. In the first place, their sight would even deter the attacker. So he wouldn't even be able to attack you. But if he dares, he ignores the, 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 the dogs and he wants to attack you. Then he'll see something, you know. They'll defend you. And the guard dog breeds are totally fearless. But it's not as cheap as that, you know. Every raw material base needs uh, to be worked on to function as it should, you know. It takes knowledge to, to uh, get any uh, outfit that's supposed to perform any function, to perform that function well. And the same applies with guard, the guard dog breeds. Mm. Now, I'm saying these things because there's now such a craze for guard dog breeds. When people call me, everybody wants a pit bull, they want a Rottweiler, <laughs> that's good. But it takes a lot of know-how to keep these dogs well. Because the fact is, a Rottweiler at heart is a guard dog. It's, it's designed, they call them man stoppers, to kill a human being, that's a fact. He'll maul you terribly, he could kill you, please. So there's two things. If you purchase a Rottweiler and you do not know how to nurture him to become a good dog, a good guard dog, an obedient one, there's two things that, that could happen. The Rottweiler could become a vegetable so that the, the, guard, the guard dog that you want, which costs so much, I mean, they could cost as much as 4,000 Ghana cities, would grow to be a, veg a vegetable that cannot defend you now, on the other hand, you may be lucky for the dog to become a, a guard dog, but then he could become a monster that you cannot control. Mm. The thing with these guard dog breeds is, it's often either two things. You are in charge or he is in charge. Mm. And imagine a dog that's in charge over human beings. That, that's not a good situation. And yet, you being in charge also, also should be done well. Because you should know how to be in you charge mean, so of your dog. You, you, this is about the training? The training. If, if you don't train properly? If you don't train properly. It will be in charge? It will be in charge. Or it may not even become a guard a dog, dog at, at all, all. Which is the reason why you bought it. You see? Or, or it can become a monster. Or it can become a monster. And please, if you are talking about a dog being a monster, <laughs> it's a serious situation. It's, it's something many people haven't seen before. You are talking about an animal with, with crashing jaw power that can break your bones, okay? Tear through tendons, kill you at a bite. That cannot be stopped, can only be controlled by a chain. And please, that's not a good situation. So training is dead important. It's very important, yes. That's the emphasis I want to lay. Mm -hmm. Wait, and that is the main problem. People are going in for their dogs, but what I see... So we don't communicate with the dogs properly we, and our communication we, can turn them into... We, we do not communicate, you see, before... You purchase a guard dog. You have to educate yourself well. Now, fortunately, now there's the internet. There's a lot of information. The, the trouble with the inf internet when it comes to information on dogs, on guard dogs, is that the internet has a lot of good people writing good opinions. But then uh, you could also chance upon information that may not exactly spell out what, what would suit your particular situation. You know, so ideally, but you go to the internet, see if you want to know whether you're dealing with a genuine trainer or not, see what he's done. Watch his training clip. You don't have to be an expert to tell if a clip is good or not. Mm -hmm. If a clip is good, you can tell. So, so then listen to what he says, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and so learn, educate yourself a little before you go in mm. for the breed that you want to go in for so that you do the right thing, mm. exactly. Mm. So b basically, uh, two quick things. Um, yeah. What, what do you training and everything? What, what are specific I, signals you want every dog owner should know 
so regarding what, their dog, what, regarding yeah, their, their relationship what, what with their training? dog. What, what, what I train dogs to obey their owners, and uh, I, I explain to people how to, to nurture the guarding instinct in a dog for it to become a guard dog. Mm. People, I would like to clarify something here, which is so important. People talk about, I want to give my dog aggressive <laughs> training, aggressive. And very honestly, now when I hear that aggressive training thing, uh, because you don't, <laughs> you don't train your dog to become aggressive. You want your dog to become a guard dog, a, a protective dog, which is responsible, which is sensible. Mm. But not an aggressive, aggressive dog. Just no, attack. an aggressive, mm. aggressive. That word, no. You don't want an aggressive dog. Mm. My, um, trained guard dogs are tough. They won't let you enter the house unless they are dead, unless they've been stopped. I mean, where stop means stopped. They cannot move anymore. But they should be sensible. They should listen. If if you ask a trained guard dog to lie down and it lies down, and a kitten passes by. Uh, uh, passing past its nose, if it is well trained, it lies down, it shuts its mouth, it doesn't attack the kitten. That is a trained dog. And yet, it can also stop a gang from, from entering your house and fight them, you know, effectively. That is a trained dog. And the safety of a, a situation like that is, if you have an, a mechanism that is dangerous, that can, that's supposed to be able to stop danger, then of course that, that means that mechanism is dangerous. And so, if you don't have absolute understanding and control for that mechanism, that is irresponsible in my opinion. Mm. You know, in, in around 1991, there was, uh, the, the, the Dangerous Dogs Act was passed in Europe, the UK, yeah. That act was passed after many people had been killed by dogs, had been mauled. So it, uh, it was required that you needed, uh, you needed to um, satisfy specific requirements to handle certain types of breeds. You know, that's how far this danger goes. And people should just Google and see how nasty it turns when someone is walking, his guard dogs that are not trained, mm. and, and they turn on somebody. Mm. So you see you, your own dogs, now you see them killing someone, and you are moving around pulling the leash, and you can't stop them because you, you were only thinking of defense, but you were not thinking of control. Mm. And it's, mm. it's not a nice situation at all. Okay. Very embarrassing to okay. the owner. So when you're, when you're getting a dog, um, yes. you should know in mind... Uh, whether you just want a dog to be a family friend, a family friend. or, a, or a, a, guard a guard dog. dog. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then you, you have to know how. You know, getting a guard dog starts from your decision. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't start from getting the dog because it takes nurturing the potential which is already in the dog for it to become a guard dog. So that if you do not know how to choose the right puppy, you failed. You know? So if you get the wrong puppy, uh, you know, and you want to get you, you want to give it the uh, training that doesn't match its potential. Mm. It's not going to work. And one 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 thing is, people assume that oh, once I've gotten a Rottweiler puppy, he's going to become grow to become a good guard dog. No, not necessarily. Mm. You need mm. to get a good Rottweiler puppy, and after getting that good Rottweiler puppy, you have to give him the right training. nurturing. Nature. You see, so if you get the nurturing wrong and the Rottweiler puppy is good, the situation is going to be bad. If, if the Rottweiler puppy is bad and the, and the nurturing is good, the, the outcome is going to be wrong. So okay. it takes getting both right to okay. get the right uh, okay. Uh, outcome. Okay. Mm. Robert, I want you to leave a number, you know, for all these dog lovers who may need okay. your assistant to either train or get a better understanding of decisions when it comes to dogs, and what number can you be reached on? Okay, please, um, you can reach me on 054-502-6763 or 027-773-7203. Okay, so the number is on your screen now for, you, all, of you, for all of you dog lovers, and uh, you know, this is a, a, an opportunity to consult somebody who knows about the, the psychology of dogs to assist you in picking whatever dog that will be right for whatever purpose you're looking for. All right? Robert, thank you so much. And uh, we will <laughs> we'll link up again. All right. OK, folks, put your hands together for Robert one more time. As Stick around, we'll be right back. Don't move, don't blink, don't breathe. The KSM Show will be right back.